Thank you very much. We are. Thank you. This is an exciting time, obviously. We have had the uh, we've had the privilege of of greeting the group in Peoria, and uh, we can assure you that uh, the governor and Mrs. Reagan are here, and they're going to be down in just a minute. We're waiting just for the the uh, rest of our press to be in place, and then we have a very special presentation to make. <laughs> it's my pleasure now to welcome and introduce to you a most distinguished alumnus of Eureka College, Governor Ronald Reagan and his wife, Nancy. Thank you very much. We, we do want to proceed with this occasion, and pep rallies, as we know, are times of great enjoyment and excitement. At the very beginning, Governor Reagan, your former football coach and continuing coach at Eureka College, Mr. Ralph McKenzie, and our present football coach, head football coach, Mr. Warner McCollum, and the three captains of our football team for 1980 have a presentation to make at you at this time. Would they please come forward?
I'm sure I don't have to tell you how proud I am to be here. I consider it a privilege and an honor on behalf of the Eureka College to have this privilege of presenting these gifts. Now, I suppose some of you know what the gifts are as they hold them here. There's two football jerseys for Mr. Reagan I'm going to eliminate my Mr. and Mrs. I'm going to speak of them, talk to them. I tell you, I'm going to address them in the way that I particularly met Mr. Reagan. I remember that I met him, and he, they called him Dutch. I have known him through these years as Dutch, and from now on, I'll refer to him as Dutch. And Nancy, of course, I don't know too well, but I'll refer to her as Nancy. Now you see that this. The insignia on here is Eureka and 80. What the 80, I'm not so sure what it stands for. <laughs> but I, I can assure you it's, it wasn't his original football jersey number. But I interpret it to be that the 80 stands for the President of the United States in 1980. a year older and have him more back in 32. For Mrs. Reagan is not a football jersey, hers is a sweater. <laughs> I hope she can wear it for now. Now, you know, I told you this has a sentimental reason, and I hope that there'll be many happy memories that come about when they wear these sweaters and jerseys. Nancy and Dutch. I wish you, and we all do, wish you the best of everything. As you work.
limited time here in your presence. It will be an inspiration to these football players sitting out here. And tomorrow, I hope they win one for the Gipper. Thank you. Thanks very much. Remember, we got to get these guys to bed early. Well, President Dan Gilbert and Mrs. Gilbert, another Coach Mac, and the first Coach Mac, and all of you, I can't tell you what this means. I, uh, it's hard for me to shift gears a little bit because for a long time, I've been out job hunting and uh, <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> Senator Percy and Bob Michael to be here tonight and to all of you, this is really a most thrilling night for me. And if I let myself go, I will bathe you in warm nostalgia. But, you know, as I saw, I don't know how long the, the traditions go or how well they're remembered over the years from back when I was here, but the man who stood up here, Mac McKenzie, as you know, played for Eureka in addition to being a coach for Eureka when I was here and still here as a part of Eureka. But when I was in school, we used to have a Peoria newspaper front sheet up in the bulletin board, kind of a trophy case over there in the administration building because the headline read, Mackenzie beats Bradley 52 to nothing. Yeah! And he had, he had made, he had made every one of the 52 points. Field goals, touchdowns, and points after touchdown. All of them. But now, he was a little impatient sometimes when we were playing. And in those days when you played both ways, defense and offense, I can remember that to make scrimmage a little tougher and more even, why they'd put the first string line uh, and the second string backfield against the first string backfield and the second string line. And I remember one night being in the first string line and someone over on the other side in that first string backfield just wasn't getting the play the way Mac thought it should be run. And he explained it a couple of times and then he came walking in there in that baseball cap and those baseball pants that he wore out in the field. And with all of us knowing what the play was, he shoved the back that was supposed to carry the ball aside and says, all right, now you give it to me. I remember touching him, a couple of other fellas, but every place that he touched me hurt. <laughs> and he went through the varsity line on the second string defensive backfield, came back without having been downed at all, put the ball down and says, now do it that away. <laughs> but let me just seriously take a few moments because I know the time is fleeting and you've waited a long time and we've been late. But let me just say one thing to all of you who are here as students at Eureka. The memories do last. I remember coming here in the depths of the Depression, the Great Depression. The endowment that supported the college had dwindled as everything had dwindled in those days. Professors taught for months and months with no salary. Merchants in town were willing to carry them, knowing that somehow things would turn out all right. Many of us who couldn't have gone here unless someone did it or helped us do it. As a matter of fact, I had one of the best, better jobs I've ever had. I washed dishes in the girls' dormitory. <laughs> I, I, but they let us they carried us, they let us defer tuition, they 
And believe me, it was, I can only tell you this, I have since had the opportunity by way of the office I held in California to serve on the Board of Regents of a great university system of nine campuses and the Board of Trustees of giant state college and universities that uh, 23 campuses and all. If I had it all to do over again, I'd come right back here and start where I was before. I tell you, please believe me when I tell you that those they may look attractive and they may look glamorous and on a Saturday with the stadium full and everything, but those big assembly line diploma mills may teach and with all due respect to them, but you will have memories, you will have friendships that are impossible on those great campuses and that just are peculiar to this place. This is an institution that lives in And as far as I'm concerned, everything good that has happened to me, everything started here on this campus in those four years that have still are so much a part of my life. to those fellas on the team. I know what it's like. Most of the time, you're kind of playing uphill. Uh, as a matter of fact, though, you might be interested to know another part of the tradition here, of that field across the street where you play football. That was uphill. <laughs> that, that, that field was such a way that a safety man used to have to wait for a punt to come over the hill so he could <laughs> locate it. And the... Uh, you always waited for the half so you could turn around and start going the other way. But anyway, one day, a bunch of us on the campus just decided that we ought to have a better one when the townspeople joined in and they provided the equipment and the field was graded and the field was planted, planted and that is Mackenzie Field. And uh, as I say, the uphill part was that in those days, only about 250 of us here, but... Uh, so most, sometimes we're playing against schools 10 times your size or more. But uh, it was all worthwhile. And one day, and remember this, we asked Mac, one day a little tired sometimes of 50% seasons, uh, we said, you know, why don't we have a schedule where maybe we could look forward to going all the way? And he said, sure, I can give you a schedule like that. And he named a few of the schools that we could play. But he said, what would you rather remember? that you played on the same field with a team that had played Iowa the week before in the Big Ten, and maybe you lost by a touchdown, as we did. He says, would you rather do that, or would you rather play a bunch of setups just so you could have a score at the end of the game that puts you out in front? And we got the idea. Uh, some of the moments I'm proudest of. I may sometimes say to someone about playing football for Eureka, and they say, where was that? And I can always say, well, I played against George Musso at Millican, who was eight years all pro tackle with the Chicago Bears. Then they remember <laughs> where it was. But fellas, I know, and you, you don't have to be told. Go on out there tomorrow and just remember one thing. It, a team that won't be beaten can't be beaten. And 
I'll just close with this, because all the rest of you have proven that something remains exactly the same as it was all those years ago. And that is, this little old school beneath the elms upon the campus used to be, used to be known and admired by everyone we met as having the greatest spirit of anyone that they played against. Well, now, immediately in the next moment or so, we'll be dismissing to go out to the east of the gymnasium for a bonfire. Governor and Mrs. Reagan will join us there to conclude the pep rally, and you're all invited to join us outside as soon as we move down here for the Governor and Mrs. Reagan. Again, we're glad you came, and we'll look forward to seeing you outside. <laughs>